This is the CIS controls presentation on incident response management control number 17 uh, from the National Cybersecurity Center. Quick explainer on the CIS controls and the implementation groups. So as you can see here, control 17 has nine safeguards or sub controls. Uh, those nine are broken up into IG 1, 2, and 3. IG1 is your basics or your basic cyber hygienes, uh, the essentials, the things that you should go after first, then move on to two, then move on to three. So what is incident response management? Establishing a program to develop and maintain incident response capability so that you can detect, respond, um, and eventually recover from an incident. Why is it critical? Um, so you're always going to be um, at some type of risk. There's always going to be threats that are um, looking to go after your assets, uh, just the nature of the cyber crime um, environment in this era is that nobody is safe and sheltered. Not to spread any uh, fear there, but um, there is nobody that is completely protected. Um, even the incident response companies themselves have been attacked. Um, so first thing you need to do here um, is be able to detect what's going on, have, know who to contact. Uh, are you contacting a vendor? Is it someone within your staff? Uh, so that's going to play into this here. And then if you don't have a plan, uh, it's impossible to know what steps you're going to take. The whole process gets botched. It costs a lot more money. It takes a lot more time. If you're a small business, um, you know, those days, even hours, are the difference between staying in business and losing business. Um, if you're a local government, then that's the difference between um, be protecting assets that uh, taxpayers are paying for, um, services that taxpayers are paying for, um, and being able to provide those essential services to your um, citizens. So IG1, uh, we're talking about um, who's going to handle the incident? Basics right there. Do you know if it's someone on staff? Is it going to be a vendor that you contact? Is it law enforcement? Um, who do you call in what order? 17.2, have the contact information at the ready. That way, right when you see the incident, there's no delay, you can make a call. Um, and then a process for reporting incidents. If someone sees that their computer crashes consistently, or the network uh, speeds are extremely slow uh, when they really shouldn't be for any reason. Um, those are some simple signs that something could be going wrong, but if they don't know who to call or who to talk to, or who to report that to, someone who's really focused on their day-to-day -day is not going to take the extra time, uh, or you hope that they do, but it happens less likely than you'd want to, um, for them to take the time to figure it out uh, they're just going to let it go. Um, so knowing exactly and telling people who to call um, and giving them their contact info. IG2, incident response process, roles and responsibilities, communication, everything within an, an IC or incident command structure or unified command structure. Um, so if you know that within your organization you're going to be handling a lot of the incident response um, responsibilities so you have an IT staff you're going to be doing um, you know maybe the up to the highest level of escalation you're going to be handle handling all of the responsibilities you need to be practicing those um, doing different tabletop exercises so that's 17.7 there incident response exercises and then being able to learn from either those practice sessions the tabletops different types of exercises or actually after a legitimate incident, <clears throat> doing post-incident uh, reviews, doing some post-mortem to, um, to learn from the experience. And then IG3 thresholds here. Um, so if there's a little bit of activity above baseline, if it's significant, if it's critical, having those thresholds to where um, you determine, all right, if, if it's at this level of severity, we have to escalate it to the highest authority. If it's just a slowdown in the network and we don't see anything else, 
Uh, maybe we need to contact our vendor. Uh, we don't need to go to the authorities right away. Uh, but having those thresholds uh, and categorizations, classif classifications can help you out. Um, some key concepts here, key takeaways, lack of planning, higher risk of exposure after an event, meaning that if you don't have the plans in place, everything after the incident is going to cost more and take longer to get back to pre-incident levels. Uh, if you, or regardless of if you have an internal IT staff or you're outsourcing those responsibilities, <clears throat> you need to do some type of planned exercise or tabletop exercise to increase the knowledge and uh, readiness of your staff. Even if it's just, all right, incident, who do we call? Let's go for it. Um, or if it's actually walking through the steps of as an incident escalates, practicing what the next steps are, who communicates with who, how do we make these decisions? Um, it all depends on the structure of your organization um, and how that's all laid out.